Going to hop right into it with Mike Stone and 42 games, three wins. When you think of it that way, it is just ultra depressing. What's your initial take on this one? Initial take on the game is their backup quarterback was better than ours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Vic, Vic was stupendous. The Lions had a lot of shots, and they put good pressure on him, but he was able to evade sack opportunities, and, and he made the plays. And Sean Hill, although at times he was okay, uh, he didn't, and well, that's part of the game. How about the running game, though? I mean, it was right there and looking pretty good for the good first half of the game, and then all of a sudden it disappears. Why do you think that happened? I think they got behind, and they started to throw the ball too much, and Philadelphia ma made some adjustments. What really bothered me was two of the times where they actually did run the ball. Third and one, don't get it. Okay, fine. Fourth and one. First of all, I would have kicked the field I goal there. Would I would have. But uh, to go with the same exact play again, Please. I mean, best is good, but he's a small guy. You know, do a little, little deception, fake play action, do something. I mean, look, it's great that they played hard. Some guys played really good, but I'm sorry. You had the stat. What is it? Four, three wins in 42 games? Enough with the, the, the style right. points for playing hard. They should play hard. They're a National Football League team. We've known the depth is an issue, but the right. tone for this one was set first play. Nate Burleson goes out with a bad ankle, and all of a sudden you're left with three wide receivers. Right, and they couldn't use a, a, another really you know, good one to take his place as far as in the three wide set. That's why Scheffler had to, you know, they played so many two tight end sets more than they normally would. That hurt, but look, it's a talent issue. They play hard, great. It's more power. And the young guys, Sue, Bess, played really well. But look, let's be honest. The linebackers, their defensive backs, they're playing hard, but they're just not good enough. And now they're the schedule not good enough. The schedule ahead is brutal. I mean, now you go on the road to play two places where you never win, and you're talking about the concept of maybe coming back 0 and 4. The Vikings are 0 and 2 as well. Yeah. Maybe they're going to be a little hungry. Do you think the streak ends th next week? Uh, no, I don't think so either. Let's get to better news. What do you say, Michigan State last night? Is there a better play that we've seen in the last decade? Little Giants. That was phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I like the fact that he names plays after a movie. It was a great call, gutsy call. Took the pressure off the the freshman kicker, and uh, it worked. And it's always good to have Notre Dame lose two weeks in a row, isn't it? It is. You're talking to a BC guy. I love when Notre <laughs> Dame loses. But clearly, the roller coaster of emotions here. Now, yeah. D'Antonio. Obviously, we hope he feels better Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. Going to take a week off at least. We don't know when he's going to be back. Northern Colorado next week. But don't forget. You just pointed it out, Wisconsin in two weeks. I mean, they're going to need the, the leader back in charge there. Yep, hopefully he'll be ready to go in you know, a week. But they, just, look, we love winning football games, but don't rush anything. This stuff is way more important than football. You could almost tell yesterday, I'm not going to say, well, you know, looks, something looks wrong with him, but he didn't have that exuberance that you would expect from a guy who just had a, a huge victory. And he doesn't really wear the emotion on the sleeve so much. But No, see, I couldn't tell at all because no. he's always so dry and all that. So I, I couldn't tell when I was watching him being interviewed on the field. No, me either. I want to give you a chance to rip on Greg Robinson of the Michigan defense. Oh, my God. I, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. They're hor they were horrible. They were so lucky they played that team. And that team, I mean, over 400 yards? I, I, I mean, they can't tackle. They're in wrong schemes. They're playing passive. They should be blitzing a little bit. Guys, they were giving like seven, eight yards cushion. Oh, yeah, they did win the football game. But you're feeling a little nervous about Bowling Green this week. A little nervous. And, and the following week against Indiana. I mean, Indiana scored, uh, what, they gained about 500 yards on Michigan last year in, at the big house. Now they've got to go on the road. Hopefully they get their defense together. I know that's a depth issue as well, but Greg Robinson has to do much better than this. He is not your stonehead, and neither is Brian Kelly, who I thought was a deserved candidate, but who are you going well, with? Well, Brian Kelly was last week. I'm not going to give I him was going for a back-to-back. -back. Come on. I'm going with uh, Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush gives the Heisman Trophy up, but then says this is not an admission of guilt. I'm sorry. If you don't think you're guilty, then they're going to have to come to my house <laughs> with, with police and whoever and take that Heisman Trophy from me. Reggie Bush, admit you're guilty. Or don't give up the Heisman Trophy, or else I got another award for you. Stonehead! That is Mike Stone. You can hear him on 97.1 in the mornings at 6 a.m. this Tuesday. Headed up with the crew to Traverse City. He'll be there for the Red Wings red and white game. Enjoy oh, the yes. drive. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Yes.